when, when the body reacts to light or sound or touch, that, that's an important source of information uh, about the environment. Uh, having the body react to mobile phone fields or high voltage power lines uh, is no help whatsoever to the body. Uh, it's, it's a potential hazard we see now, but, but it's of no, of no benefit. Uh, uh, so the, the uh, uh, evolution never brought about a system for detecting those fields. Those fields didn't exist a hundred years ago, so it's impossible that evolution could have created such a detection system. But the detection system does exist. I mean, the evidence for it is very clear. So we can speculate about why the body detects those fields. My personal opinion is that it detects the fields because uh, it has proteins that are sensitive um, to these fields. And these proteins play some other role in the body, but they are vulnerable to man-made fields. When evolution put this protein in the human brain and conferred on it the function that it does uh, uh, perform uh, to help the organism. Uh, when it did that, um, uh, uh, there was no reason, there was no evolutionary reason to think that there might be fields in the environment which would allow uh, uh, detection to occur and hence compromise the organism. It's just simply a vulnerability to the way the body has used what I call an electrogenic protein, a protein that can embrace the field. It's simply ironic the way, um, the way um, uh, uh, this thing developed um, from from our work, um, um, the work of me and my colleagues. It's it's quite clear uh, um, that uh, what the brain reacts to is uh, uh, the the change in electrical environment. So, um, uh, what what do we mean by a digital signal? What we mean by a digital signal is. Uh, uh, in, uh, in time, there's no signal. All of a sudden, it's on, and it's on for a certain period of time, and then it's off. That's what a digital signal is. It so happens that this electrogenic protein in the brain, this protein that, that embraces the external field, has the property of reacting to a change. So, 217 times a second, when pulses from the mobile phone are entering your brain, when the pulse turns on, that generates a signal in the, in the brain. When the pulse turns off, it generates another signal in the brain. The, the brain isn't responding, so far as I know now, to the presence of the pulse, but to turning it on and turning it off. So therefore, in every second, since there are 217 pulses a second, you're getting uh, 434 what we call evoked potentials in the brain over and over and over and over again for however many minutes a month you use the phone. That's the ultimate source of the signal in the brain that compromises human health. In connection with uh, understanding uh, mobile phone fields, uh, none whatsoever. I think they're meaningless with regard to that application. For several reasons. Uh, uh, first, you, you need to understand where SAR came from. Uh, um, uh, I, I was there when, when SAR was invented. Uh, uh, Richard Phillips, uh, Don Justison, Sal Michelson, Herman Schwann, these were men um, who created the SAR, who, 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 uh, whose mind gave rise to it. And the reason they did was because they were interested in uh, in developing uh, 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 microwave ovens and in understanding how to cook meat. Uh, um, and it's useful for understanding how to cook meat, but it has no application whatsoever that I have ever seen suggested or advanced for understanding uh, uh, mobile phones. It works for dead muscle. It has just no applicability, in my, in my opinion, to live brain. Because the, the health risks associated with mobile phone fields have nothing to do with heat. So it makes no sense to say, I have a really great way of measuring heat when uh, the measurement of heat is, is irrelevant uh, to understanding health risks. Um, uh, uh, any measurement that you make that has no, uh, has no connection with what you're interested in is just a waste of time. Um, it can produce a lot of data, uh, and when it's uh, and when it's when the calculations of SAR are done, they can produce beautiful pictures. But they're all 
uh, the pictures are arbitrary and the measurements are meaningless. I mean, it's, um, it's quite clear that that's the case.